Thank you, Lord Mayor. To help keep everyone safe, please maintain social distancing inside the town hall whenever this is possible. Please try to avoid congregating around exits and entrances. Please follow any signage which is provided, such as one-way systems, to help keep you safe. Please remain seated as much as possible during the meeting. Council members, officers and members of the public are recommended to wear a face covering when moving around the building. Council members and officers are asked to wear a face covering at all times within the council chamber, except when speaking at the meeting. Hand sanitizer will be available for you to use. If you have any concerns or are unsure, please ask a member of staff. Can I request members of the public to familiarise themselves with the fire safety and evacuation notices displayed in the public gallery? In the event of the evacuation signal sounding, please take instruction from the security attendants who will be in attendance throughout the meeting. For those of us in the chamber, the main staircase by the anteroom is not in use. We would need to evacuate by the doors at the rear of the chamber, turning right and making our way down the corridor and into the stairwell, then using the fire escape which leads to Cheney Road. Once you have exited the building, please make your way to the assembly point at Tudor Square. If for any reason your path to the Cheney Row exit is blocked, turn left out of the council chamber and go down the staircase at the end of the corridor, then using the fire escape which leads to Surrey Street. Please can I request everyone to switch mobile devices to silent mode so as not to disturb the conduct of the meeting. The meeting today will be webcast and the recording will also be available for people to view later through the Council's website. It's also possible that Sheffield Live TV will record and rebroadcast this meeting. Photography, video and sound recording of the meeting is permitted, but the Lord Mayor does have discretion to withdraw or suspend this permission if the recording is disrupting the conduct of the meeting, is being undertaken in a manner which could capture personal information, or if a member of the public participating objects to being recorded. Any member of the public due to speak at the meeting who does not wish to be recorded should say so at the start of their speech, and the Lord Mayor will suspend the permission to record their contribution. For safety reasons, please may I request that recording equipment is not held over the balcony. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Item three on, oh yes. <laughs> Good <Goodness me>. <laughs> <laughs> Do apologise. Item three on the agenda is declarations of interest. This item of business is to enable members of the council to declare an interest in the main item of business on the agenda today. Does a member wish to declare an interest in the item on the committee, uh, on committee system structure today? Thank you. Item four, members' questions related to urgent business. I have not received any uh, urgent bit questions, any questions on urgent business today. Okay. 
Okay, item five, public questions and petitions relating to the new committee system of governance for the council. At the previous council meeting, I gave notice that I had given permission for public questions relating to this council governance arrangements to be asked at today's extraordinary meeting of the council. A period of 60 minutes is allowed in total for ordinary petitions and public questions. Questions or, sorry, questions or petitions are required to be submitted two clear days in advance of the meeting to help the, with public attendance at this meeting to be managed in a safe way. For this meeting, questions on the governance arrangements have been received from two members of the public I have accepted that there's a gentleman called Mr. Cooley. Uh, I'm prepared to let you ask a question, Mr. Cooley, even though you didn't give us notice. That's not a problem. I shall ask each questioner to go to one of the microphones in the public gallery to ask their question. A reply will be given by Councillor Julie Grocott, Deputy Leader to the Executive Members of the Community Engagement and Governance Committee. So I'm going to ask Mr. Cooley if he would like to ask his question now, please. These microphones are working, I, I think. Yes, my, my question is a, a very general question, and it's not about specifics because I've been following this process for, well, at least the, the last uh, year and several years before that. So my question, which I'm assuming you've all got a copy of, is following our referendum in May 2021, which was almost a year ago, what difference will ordinary citizens like me see when these new local area committees are implemented in May 2022. In other words, I'd like to know what what can be the difference next May f from what was in, in operation from previous. Now, I gave a little bit of a background just to explain my involvement. I say this referendum result was supposed to give ordinary citizens more involvement in council decisions before they are implemented. But these new lacks seem very much the same as previous local area partnerships, which were in place from 2013 to 2021 under a different name. Um, I actually attended the council meeting in 2013, which was chaired by Councillor Iqbal, who <laughs> probably remember me, when local area partnerships were introduced to replace the previous community assemblies. These used the same boundaries as, as previously, but they added a feature which was very welcome at the time called ward forums. In other words, there was um, ward forums introduced as part of the system to make it easier for ordinary citizens to um, access the decision-making process via their electoral councillors. Um, I attended the transitional meetings of the South West Local Air Committee, um, and uh, there's been two of these transitional meetings, and I did raise questions about ward forums, but I've not had a clear answer yet, nor an opportunity for discussion. So following a represent, following a refer, no, sorry, get me a teach right, following a referendum result, it's even more important that regular ward forums are included, because um, the, the referendum was very clear that we wanted more input to the system with each electorate of about 15,000, which is, you know, per ward, uh, to give them more what's called bottom-up involvement in the new decision-making process. So before a final decision is made, my question again, I'll just repeat it, please reconsider this, otherwise most of the electorate will feel excluded from this new but remote process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your question. I'm going to hand over to the Deputy Leader of the Council, Councillor Grocott. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Good afternoon, Mr Cooley. I don't know if you remember me, but many moons ago, you and I used to sit on the uh, 
Councillor, you have fallen together, so it's good to see you again this afternoon. And thank you for all your interest that you are taking in our new system of governance. I think there's just a little, a couple of points of clarification that I, it might be helpful for me to make for you. We already have local area committees. They are set up and running and are in seven areas bringing together um, a number of, of wards all in one place. They are um, the local areas where local councillors are working with communities to make sure that we have a local plan that the public locally can engage in and that they can work towards making sure priorities of that local community are adhered to and seen. If you are suggesting that you would like to see um, ward forums as well, so that individual wards have their own meetings besides the um, local area committees, then that is a matter for the individual local area committees and the local ward councillors to do. I personally see absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think it's a good idea but that is a matter for local individual um, ward councillors to make. I'm quite happy to do something like that in my ward, and I would imagine that other councillors would be prepared and happy to do that as well. So I think in the first instance for yourself, it may be a good idea to take that back to your local area committee. But um, in front of me, I see Councillor Mary Lee, who is the chair of the Black Group, and I'm sure that in future that is something that Mary can take to the... Um, lack chairs so that they can look to see how they progress that. The committee system is going to um, work to make sure that councillors all have a say in decisions that are made across the council, which is to be welcomed and which is a really good thing, and the local area committees will have an important role in feeding into those. If you were able to get hold of the papers for today, Appendix 1 on page 53 provides a diagram of how that will all work. So it may be worth your while having a look at that diagram so that you get an, a clear idea of how the structures in the new committee, um, provided that they are passed today, that they will work. Um, so hopefully that answers your question and thank you for coming along today. Thank you very much, Councillor Grocott. We have a question from Ruth Hubbard, uh, but unable to come today. So I've made a decision, having spoken to the Whips, normally what would happen is that anyone who doesn't come to the council meeting, when they've submitted a question, it's not necessary. We don't read it out, we just reply to it. The cabinet member would reply. But because uh, this is a special meeting, uh, we felt, myself and the Whips, that this should be read out in full and when the minutes go out from this meeting, a copy of the questions and the replies to those questions will be submitted. Is that clear? I'm going to now call upon uh, Gillian Duckworth to read out those, question, that, those questions. Thank you, Lord Mayor. We have four questions from Ruth Hubbard. Uh, the first question, at its first meeting, the Governance Committee received a report that included a long section on the background to governance change in Sheffield. As reported at the time, this was to ensure there was a proper record for people looking back, to tell the story of the background to Sheffield's governance change, and to recognise this as an historic moment. However, the report and discussion did not even include one mention of the sole reason this council is changing its governance system, which was entirely down to the work by citizens and communities organising for change and for more democratic local governance under a modern committee system. This is no mere technicality of an omission. It is rather like saying trade unions have no role and nothing to contribute to workers' rights, or like saying tree campaigners have nothing to do with stopping street trees being felled. For the record, then, will this council confirm that the overriding and primary reason why this council is getting rid of strong leader governance is because of the collective action of Sheffield citizens and communities. Question two. Given this apparent inability to acknowledge and embrace why governance change is happening, it is unsurprising that our council has been unable to undertake any joint working for the task and that Sheffield citizens and community agendas have not been addressed in a significant way to date. 
The conversation and negotiation has been driven by the concerns and questions of politicians and officers and for completing the basic technical work required rather than by the experiences, agendas, concerns and questions of citizens and communities. Are there better prospects now for moving beyond the political and technocratic conversations to address the core aspirations and detailed agenda of citizens for more democratic local governance under a modern committee system. How will this happen, or will the council continue to operate only on its own terms and according to its own agenda, and despite the claim to put Sheffield citizens first? Question three. There are a number of other areas where its own state of governance principles do not match the proposals being put forward today. This question mentions just one of these areas. Unlike almost all councils going through governance change, this council has consistently and repeatedly refused to make the basic decision that the new system will not be more bureaucratic and more costly. Council today has been asked to make its new governance system both more bureaucratic and more costly, not least in the very decision to establish an extraordinary eight core council committees. This choice will go against its own state of governance principles, the wishes of Sheffield citizens and a very difficult budget position. It flies in the face of statutory guidance as well as the very recent government required inspection report for Wirral Council. There appears to be no compelling reasons, including size of the council, for such an odd and extreme decision, although in part it seems to be based on early and tentative guidance given by a chief executive not currently in role. What are the compelling reasons why our council wants to unnecessarily make its governance system more bureaucratic and more costly and for no apparent benefit? And question four, the basic change of governance in the proposals today from strong leader to modern committee system is a far better starting point for democratic local governance in Sheffield, despite the weaknesses, gaps and big omissions in the approach adopted by the governance committee and in the content of the proposals today. On participation, much of the mention of participation in the proposals is optional and aspirational rather than embedded and operationalised. The general focus is largely on more rather than mechanisms for demonstrating better, deeper, more effective or impactful participation. A particular weakness is in stakeholder and partner involvement, where even a minor baseline of establishing and integrating stakeholders in committee decision making has not been reached. Much of the thinking and statements on promoting equalities and mitigating inequalities remains vague and is not embedded or operationalised by actual mechanisms. It's 2022 and we still see vague intention, no data, no clear objectives, no targets, monitoring frameworks, nor the establishment of clear, measurable outcomes. Are these two areas, amongst many, where this council would expect to see improvements over coming months, including shifts in thinking towards elements of actual power sharing and demonstrable progress, evidenced not by its own assessment, but by citizens, communities and stakeholders. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Julian. Can I call upon Councillor Grocott to answer that question? Those questions, shall we say? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Starting with question number one. This room is full of councillors, and I'm sure I don't speak out of turn when I say that we, of all people, believe very passionately in democracy and the importance of all citizens' views when we represent the public here. So much so that we all give up most of our time to get to that cause every single day. Any suggestion that we are somehow trying to ignore or conceal the citywide debate, petition and dem democratic referendum which led directly to this meeting today is both preposterous and easily refuted. Strange comparisons with intervened criticisms of trade unions or tree campaigners do not seem helpful. I feel we have done much as we could in good faith and in the time available to acknowledge and do justice to the views of the city and we have committed to improving the way we do this in the future too. 
I want to be absolutely clear about this. Yes, the formal part of this change has come about from a multifaceted citywide debate about local democracy, which led to a petition and a legally binding referendum, the result of which is this council's course is committed to responding and delivering. Almost a quarter of the registered electors in Sheffield actively voted for a committee system, which was a decisive majority of the votes cast. But as importantly, this council has to decide what kind of committee system to have. And because it has listened and is acting on the strength of feeling which the council has heard from the city in all kinds of settings and voices over the past few years, including the campaign to which you refer and a range of other sources, before and since the referendum, it is changing the way it plans to make its decisions. Not only are citizens' influence on this not being concealed, I am proud of their feedback and the fundamental approach we have taken to this, and they are why the proposals for Sheffield's committee system look the way they do. Having said that, we can always do better. Section 6.2 of today's report talks about the short-term and medium-term aims to improve engagement and participation of the public, partners, stakeholders and more alongside the new local area committees. In respect of question two, while there is always room for improvement, we have very openly worked on these designs with partners, citizens and stakeholders via a range of events since September. Hyperlinks in section 6.2.1 of the report leads to much more information about this work. This work is being supported and continued by our partner Involve as we speak, and I am grateful that you're, for your ongoing participation along with that. Continued improvements of our new system is clearly built into our plans at recommendation two, and as you can see, we are being absolutely explicit at our intention for that exercise to be participated so that we have the benefits of all of our citizens' input. In respect of question three, the reason for the number of committees are, are discussed at section 6.63 of today's report, and more detail can be found in the reports to the Governance Committee since September. Hyperlinks to many of the, these are in today's report. The principle that the new committee system should not be overcomplicated or costly has absolutely been in the minds of members throughout this process. It was agreed by the committee as one of its first decisions back in November 2021, and it is literally the first numbered principle at Appendix 2. Remember, we are delivering a system which must not fail and by its very nature replaces individual decision makers with multiple committees of multiple decision makers. Although it, may not have been, although it may have been done somewhere, the Governance Committee could not find evidence that a transition to a committee system had been successfully delivered in a cost-neutral fashion by other councils, even when this had been a stated goal. As the Chief Executive said during the committee's inquiry, this new system has to be resourced for success. However, we are all very mindful of the financial pressures which the Council currently faces, and you can be sure that both the system and the cost of the system will remain under constant review over the coming years. In respect to the final question, question four, various options for consulting or even co-opting stakeholders as part of the decision-making process are not only newly available, but are enshrined in the public participation um, and engagement toolkit set out in section 6.2.6, recommendation 12. Uh, um, the council has com also committed to further work on this over the medium term as set out in recommendations one to four. The council is committed to actions that reduces inequality and improves equality of opportunity and inclusion across all of its work. We know that we have much, fur we know that we have much further that we need to go, and our one-year plan makes plain our commitment to become fair, inclusive organisation that reflects the diversity of the city we serve, 
and that tackles discrimination and prejudice wherever it is found. Understanding the impact of our decisions on different groups of people and taking steps to mitigate these where any negative impact is identified will be fundamentally important to the new committees. The way that the committees do this is through consultation and engagement with the diverse communities across the city. Understanding the evidence and data by being clear about the outcomes, what we expect, and by monitoring the impact that these decisions have and have on different groups of people. Finally, as I have already stated, and is clear from today's report and recommendations, we are proposing a firm commitment to ongoing review and improvement of the system with the involvement of citizens, communities and stakeholders. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Grocott. Please, can I ask Nigel Slack to go to the microphone? You're not far away, Nigel. And ask your questions, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It's nice to be back in the chamber in a sort of way, but all those people all together ugh, scares me. Um, and it's also nice that we've, we've not lost tradition in that I'm again lucky last when it comes to questions. So question one. The Governance Committee and the officers and councillors of that committee have sweat blood over this proposal for the transition to a modern committee system for Sheffield City Council. They are to be commended. And I hope this meeting will not allow party politics to undermine all that hard work with petty amendments aimed at gaining some point scoring in the run-up to May's elections. I'm not used to a clap halfway through. Um, a key expectation of the residents of the city in choosing to make this change is that councillors and parties learn to work together for the common good of the city and put aside party pettiness to achieve the best future for the city. Will council therefore pass the recommendations in this report unchanged and allow the experience of the next months to be the guide as to what needs changing in time and how that is best achieved? And question two, in similar vein, will council now undertake a review of the electoral rules in the city to consider the benefits of all out elections and the better fit they offer for a modern committee system of governance with a consequent impact on better decision making and stability for the future? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Slack. Uh, thank you for your questions. Can I call upon Councillor Grocott to respond, please? Thank you, Lama. Thank you for the questions, Nigel. Um, and if it makes you feel any better, you were the first question on my list. Um, thank you for your question. Um, the proposals on the table are indeed the result of much hard work from the Governors Committee and officers led by Gillian Duckworth. Um, I would just like to place on record my sincere thanks to Gillian and her team. They've done a, um, a tremendous job in supporting the committee um, over this municipal year, so thank you very much for that. But it's important to emphasise that we wouldn't be in this place at all and the proposals would look very different if it were not also for the enormous energy and interest of Sheffield's public who have been integral to the design process. The campaigners, expert witnesses, community leaders and all interested citizens who have made their voices heard before and since the referendum who have come to our engagement sessions across the city and online, or who have given evidence to our inquiry. And I'd like to place on record my thanks to you and to them too. Thank you. As for whether these recommendations should remain amended, um, unamended today, firstly, while I'm extremely proud of these recommendations and the work they represent, I am sure there is scope to improve them. As you say, as soon as we launch the system in May, we will begin to learn what to adjust or to change. But for now, I commend the recommendations to the council. And secondly, of course, um, I can't and I wouldn't want to better the judgment of members here today. While politics should never be petty, we heard from one of, one, um, of our academic uh, witnesses at the inquiry who said that it is usually a mistake to try and strip politics out of democratic bodies. 
No doubt we will hear party positions today, and that is right in a political environment. But the process of working up these proposals through the Governance Committee has been an excellent example of cross-party working for the benefit of the whole city. And I think it is reflected in the nature of the cross-party motion and the formal um, amendments which we are going to consider here today. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Grocott. That concludes the, uh, this item of business. So we're now on item six uh, on the agenda, committee system structures. <coughs> Firstly, we shall deal with the procedural matter as regards to the item of business and in accordance with the council's procedural rules, four and 11, a motion to be moved to suspend the council procedure 17.5 to remove the time limit on the speeches of the mover and the seconder of the motion. And all other speakers shall speak for up to two minutes. Suspend Council Procedure 17.6 to remove 25 minutes as a time limit for this item of business. Is, there, is the motion moved? Thank you, Councillor Hurst. Seconded. Thank you. We'll now move to the main uh, item of business on this agenda, which is to... Sorry? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I do apologise. I'm dictating to you all. Can I ask everyone to agree that, please? Thank you very much. I do apologise. We now move to the main business of this item, which is to approve a new committee system of governance for the council to take effect at its annual general meeting of the council on the 18th of May. The council's governance committee at its meeting on the 9th of March 2022 made a recommendation for the council to consider. There is a motion to approve the recommendations made by the governance committee and there are two proposed amendments to be considered. The motion will be moved and seconded, and then the mover and seconder of each amendment will then speak. The matter will be deba then debated. A document containing the motion and the amendments are numbers one and two, was circulated by email to all members of the council yesterday and has been published on the website with the agenda for this meeting Paper copies have been circulated in the council chamber. The motion will be moved by Councillor Julie Grocott, Chair of the Governance Committee, and it will be seconded by Councillor Penny Baker, the Deputy Chair of this committee. Can I call upon... Sorry, Councillor Grocott, you've not had much time to sit down. Uh, can I call upon you, Councillor Grocott, to move the motion, please? Thank you, Lord Mayor, and I hope to be doing a lot of sitting down then after I finish this presentation. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to start by placing on record my thanks to everyone who has con contributed to this process in whatever way um, and has been on the journey that has led to this council meeting today. Over this municipal year, I've had the pleasure of working with a cross-party group of councillors and a team of dedicated and hard-working officers to put together the report that is before the council. The 94 recommendations contained within the report set out a new way of working in a committee system of governance for Sheffield City Council. Anyone who reads it will see that a great deal of time, discussion, questioning, investigating and good old-fashioned consultation has gone into the paper to ensure that we give this council the best possible chance of moving to a successful committee system in May. We've held hearings with other councillors who operate committee systems, received evidence from experts and members of the public and our local communities. All this information has assisted us to shape the recommendations we are to debate. Our aim from the start has been to make sure that we introduce a system that is open, transparent and allows for effective engagement with our communities, residents and businesses across all of the city. Consultation and engagement will continue to ensure that Sheffielders understand that they can engage in local democracy. 
The Labour Group members have always valued working alongside our communities and to ensure that this engagement continues, seven local area committees, or LACs as we now affectionately call them, are an important part of the new governance system and have already been operating this year. In partnership with residents and businesses, the LACs have established local plans to deal with issues that are important to local people. This is the local element of our new governance system, and it is reassuring to know that the LAC chairs were far-sighted enough to realise that over time they may, may wish to devolve other responsibilities to the LACs. I was delighted to hear that in their November 21 meeting, the LAC chairs agreed a process by which they can request a services delegated from the new committee system to the LAC. I am sure that once the new committee system of governance commences in May, the LACs will consider using this process to devolve services that their communities tell them they would like to see delivered more locally. The strategic element of our new system is the establishment of seven new policy committees who will have the responsibility for specific areas of work and the budget associated with them. Decisions will be made by all members who sit on each committee. The policy committees will be provided with a toolkit of options of how to engage with communities on policy decisions that they are taking. It is important that the Council continues to operate and make decisions in a timely way. Scrutiny will no longer be required as pre-decision scrutiny will take place in the policy committees. The new governance system provides information regarding the setting of agendas, work programmes and priorities for the policy committees. It sets out how urgent decisions will be made. The scheme of delegation has been carefully considered by the Governance Committee and recommendations as to how this will operate um, and within the committee system are included in the paper. Both members and staff will need training on the new way of working and the new roles and responsibilities that they will perform. The paper on page 46 sets out the, the support that will be provided to the policy committees. We have liaised with trade unions and staff to ensure that they are aware of the new responsibilities resulting from the changes to the committee system. The full council meetings will be the body that agrees the corporate plans in terms of reference to the policy committee and will continue with its statutory functions such as budget setting. The Lord Mayor will continue to be the ceremonial first citizen of the city and the leader of the council is the spokesperson for the council. Being a councillor is a responsibility we choose to put ourselves forward for as local citizens. It is important in doing so that we have the opportunity to undertake various roles and tasks that are part of a councillor's role. This opportunity should be afforded to all councillors, whatever our circumstances. To this end, the Governance Committee tasked Councillor Dawn Dale and Zahira Nas with co-chairing one of our transition committees to look at how we could provide flexibility for members who may need it for a whole variety of reasons. I would like to thank my two colleagues for the additional work they undertook looking at co-chairing and job sharing, which has resulted in recommendations to offer these options to councillors under the new committee system. Notwithstanding our best efforts, we know that we won't have got this absolutely right at the first time of asking. 94 recommendations in this paper alone gives an idea of the scale of the task the committee has to undertake. For this reason, we have also factored in a review of the committee system after six months of operation. It is important that we listen to the people of Sheffield, that we focus on getting this committee system right, a system that listens and works for our citizens. As part of the review, we will listen to our communities, our staff and members. One of the first tasks of the Governance Committee was to establish a set of design principles. We have used these as a guide to draw up today's recommendations and they will also serve as a useful tool during our six monthly review to establish how well our system is working. Before we go any further with changes to our new governance system, we need to ensure that we have the basics right, that we are engaging with our communities, making timely and safe decisions that are in the very best interests of this wonderful city that we 84 councillors are all extremely privileged to serve. Lord Mayor, I move the motion.
Thank you, Councillor Grocott. Can I call upon Councillor Penny Baker, please, Deputy Chair of the Committee, to now speak? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, and thank you, Julie, for the opportunity to second this motion. I think it actually shows the way this cross-party group has worked. It's worked cross-party. And, it, and it's done it in a way that has um, ended up with a report that contains the feelings of everybody in this room, I hope. Um, we have a lot of people to thank, actually. A lot of people to thank. We've got uh, Gillian and her officers who have been brilliant. We have Alex, who there sat in the corner with his mask, who's been guiding us through this, has learned quite a lot of lessons about the way people in Sheffield work. And they're quite often, where there is a will, there is a Sheffield way. Uh, and things have developed differently because of that. But thank you ever so much. You've put up with us because when we all turn on you, it must be quite horrific. I also want to thank all the members uh, of the committee for their attitude and their sense of humour and their ability to work through pages and pages and pages. Yeah, pages of documents. And they've done it with a sense of humour. There's been a joke within the committee, and I, I think the ladies concerned would be quite happy for me to pass them on. They would be, um, Sue was our spokesperson giving an opinion, and Shaned would give her opinion, and then the other person would come to speak on it, and would it be a case of, I agree with Shaned, or I agree with Sue. So consequently, it became an in-running joke. But it shows that the work was done in a way where everybody felt they could be open and honest and agree with each other. It was helped very much, Julie, by your sense of humour and the fact that you allowed us to bring humour into the committee and it made a big difference. We took an awful lot of evidence from an awful lot of people, some inside the council, some outside the council, Mr Slack. You yourself uh, was one of them. And we had to home in on our listening skills. They're important for any role, but as a councillor, I think we all know how important it is to listen to the, the people of Sheffield and the experts that advise us. And I assure anybody who has any doubt about that, that we listened, and we listened hard, and we listened well. We, the system we have now is not perfect. It's the result of a lot of hard work to get here. But we both acknowledge, we all acknowledge that going forward, it's going to change because we're going to learn by experience. And in going through it bit by bit and revisiting it in the same way as we have now and listening to our colleagues and listening to members of the public, we're going to end up eventually with a new system, which will be the Sheffield system and it will be a system that we can be proud of, that will be inclusive, that will listen going forward, and it will do its very best for the people of Sheffield. Now, I thought I'd only got two minutes, but I now discover I've got more. But I'm going to be kind to everybody and just say thank you very much to everybody at Works That Committee. You all did yourself proud. Thank you very much. And I'm proud to second this motion. So just to remind councillors that everyone from now on will get two minutes to speak. Can I call upon councillor Kate MacDonald, please, to move amendment number one. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And thanks again to all involved members of the Governance Committee led by Councillor de Grockett and also to all of the officers led by, by Gillian. <coughs> My amendment is a very short one, but it makes a very important point. As everyone knows, we have an extremely challenging financial position at the moment. And while I'm sure that we all take ownership of this, this amendment makes this crystal clear. Each of the policy committees must take responsibility for the budgets they will be allocated and ensure that services deliver within the budget. 
and this makes this responsibility crystal clear and explicit. This is obviously really crucial to ensure that we can deliver on the difficult budget we agreed earlier this month. So I hope you will all support this amendment. I move it. Thank you, Councillor MacDonald. I call upon Councillor Richards to second the amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you, Kate. Um, Governance Committee was a challenge. Um, I think one of our meetings was four hours long, and one of them was three and a half hours long, and I don't know how Julie managed to somehow uh, herd that load of kittens that you were trying to keep going. But despite all those hours, it took Kate's eagle eye to spot that we needed this amendment. And it's an amendment which actually goes to the heart of what this new way of working is about, which is that everybody on the committee has responsibility for making sure that we keep within our budget. It's not just the chair or the vice chair, it's a committee responsibility and it's something that has to be taken very seriously. And I know not all of us have done training and development around council budgets, and it all looks a bit scary. So I just wanted to say that the uh, Governance Committee has also asked that there is going to be shed loads of training and development opportunities for members. So we expect these to be the best monitored budgets ever. And with that, I move. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Richards. I now call upon Councillor Sue Alston to move the amendment number two, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I too must start by thanking everyone who's been involved in getting us to this point. The members of the public, our expert witnesses who gave their time to give us their ideas and feedback, the officers who've had to translate. Johnson and Gibson and uh, Councillor Dale. Over to you, Councillor Alston. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm going to start, as most of you have already, by thanking everyone who's got, who has been involved in getting us to this point. The members of the public are expert witnesses who've given time to give us their ideas and their feedback 
the officers who have worked really hard to help us translate our requests into a workable constitution. And to my colleagues on the Governance Committee, where we have worked through the issues and decisions together, and as Penny has said, with plenty of humour as well. In May, we will start to use this new committee system. But the structure and the processes that we are agreeing on today are to be kept under review, so that we can make changes where we see something could be improved. And as the first English Met Council to undertake this process, there's bound to be some issues. The starting point for this process was a referendum initiated by citizens who felt that their council was not working for them. We have tried to build into the process more public engagement and for a wider group of Sheffield citizens to be asked for their views when the decisions which affect them are being made. Local area committees are part of this. Different communities within Sheffield have different priorities and different needs. And by delegating, um, so by delegating power to representatives, people who know their areas and engage with the people who elected them, decision, decisions should better reflect the priorities of local citizens. Our amendment is asking the Governance Committee next year to look at how we can take that process further and delegate more decisions with the associated budgets to committees working within Sheffield's diverse communities. The local plans that each local area committee has produced were based on the feedback from residents. And yet if other lacks are anything like ours, many of the things we've been asked to do will need at the moment to be fed back to central policy committees as they are outside the lacks remit. How much better if we could take on more of those ideas and deliver them? This amendment is about moving the new structure forwards, exploring different options and continuing to develop our responsiveness to local people. Thank you, Councillor Alston. Can I call upon Councillor Mike Leverett, please, to second that amendment? Thank you, Lord Mayor. And thanks to the members and officers on, their governance on the Governance Committee for all their contributions. And in particular, to the officers who took on board many of the reservations members had in the early days of the committee's work. We've developed a workable and deliverable modern committee system. It aligns itself with the Council's functional directorates and is key to effective decision making. Further, maintaining a balanced workload for members has been maintained so councillors have sufficient time to serve residents with their casework demands, as well as serving the wider city with commitments, not just the policy committees, as well as local area committees, but the other key committees of the council. I'd also like to thank all contributors, whether members of the public, other councils, and expert witnesses, the contributions from Colin Copas, Professor of Local Politics at De Montford University, and John Kay from Ingelow were key to ensuring we understood the practical issues associated with implementing a modern committee system. One of those was early review. A number of councils said it was a mistake to leave reviewing what they were doing into future years. We are now reviewing no later than six months after commencement, so change that they made if required. The Lib Dem amendment focuses on looking forward to some areas which we see will want revisiting by the committee in November. I will commend our amendment to members, which builds on the work by, done by the Government's Committee and the Government's proposal. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you, Councillor. We now move to the debate on the matter. May I remind members that the usual protocol in the council chamber is that members stand when speaking at this meeting. Please lower your face mask to speak. Thank you. First person on the list to speak is Councillor Lee. Councillor Mary Lee. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to speak on the amendment from the Lib Dems, really, because uh, it's slightly... Um, We've, we've, been, we've been really good at, um, in this Governance Committee. We've all, when we've had disagreements, we've, we've talked to each other, we've persuaded each other, and we've come to a consensus, and that's been the nature of the Governance Committee all along. And, and to get this amendment, it seems a bit out of kilter with all that. Um, and I just want to say, in terms of um, the item on their amendment 10 to, 11, 10, was it, uh, 10 to 11, uh, 10 to 16, 
uh, 11 to 16, sorry. Um, there is a review pro process in place. You've mentioned it yourself. The Governor's Committee will continue, maybe not with the same people, but it will continue, and in six months' time, we'll re do a review of everything that's happened over that six months in terms of the new policy committees, and then uh, eventually make its recommendations to full council for 23-24. So that is in place. So I don't think you really need to bring that one. Um, and then again, in terms of the item 16, um, I just... Councillor Julie Grocott referred to it in her speech when she said at the, at the um, Black Chairs Group on the 21st of November, um, uh, uh, officers brought a delegation process for, de for uh, 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 services to or items to be devolved down to local area, uh, local area committees and items again to be referred up and to policy committees and, and again down to local area committees. So there is a process in place, in place for devolved delegation to local area committees. Um, there is a process, this, um, we can refer anything up. When Andrew Sanger um, thanked the officer for bringing this and asked um, when the process was, would be underway and would it be speedy, the officer said, yes, we could, we could do this at any time from, from that day or forward. We could refer things up to um, the transition committee in, at that point um, to look at what we wanted to devolve down to local area committees. Um, Councillor Hooper said, well, will the process be, how long will it be? And he says, well, it, you know, the process depends on how complex it is. So one of the first items you mentioned is parks. Very, very complex service. But, the, you know, certainly some things, some things in parks and maybe the whole, the parks themselves may be devolved down. But we really, really do need to understand what that means. And so, you know, you, why you would ask that committee oh. to look at that? I'm not quite sure, but it, there is a process time. in place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Rivers. Hello, can you all hear me? <laughs> um, thank you, Lord Mayor. As you probably all know, this is my last speech in this beautiful building and in front of you. And I'm very proud to actually be speaking on this item because I believe in voice and empowering communities and making sure that we work together. I wrote this speech, but many of it is actually thank yous. This is a milestone for Shopwell. I know we've been there before, but this feels different. And I think we need to stick to it, support it, and be part of it as we have been. Of course, using the voices of those we represent, not just what we believe in. We have, um, we can do this. And we have shown that the transitional, in the transitional committees, the dedication, yes, um, numerous times, but the dedication and the fact that we listen to each other's voice and opinions. I'd like to thank um, It's Our City and the people of Sheffield for bringing this to us. And the residents who gave their time to make sure that we listen to what they want. I have a big ask, Lord Mayor. Tomorrow, the next day, the next few months, I'm going to be the general public. I'm going to be asking questions. My big ask is that we continue to work together for the city, that we live up to the sustainable communities that our governance is built on, that means the voice, the empowerment, and that the communities are in the center of this. That we continue to encourage every community to have their voice in every corner, every postcode, where our lives are based. Lord Mayor, we have learned many lessons throughout the process of this change. We have learned that language change needs to happen. We have learn to change the word how to reach. Officers listened amazingly. And we, changing words and language is changing policies, changing feelings, and it's changing um, what we need to do. My thank you to everyone, to the Green Group, to, the, to Alex for coming all the way from Cornwall to support us. And to every single one of you to remember, and this is my other big ask, that you don't just stand for your communities and for your area because you have nothing to do. You actually have it in your heart to change things. And for those who are coming to these seats, 
I would say continue to be the best you can. Shopping is the city that I chose for my family. Shopping is a beautiful city with a big heart because it has amazing people. Lord Mayor, one more thing. I'm sorry, I know I'm going to have a little bit leeway here, but we're also going through another change. That change is to, to bring the, the Race Equality Commission. And I'd like to thank Councillor Mohammed and the members who have been helping us as commissioners, because the commissioners had to deal with so much hard work and listen to so much evidence. Uh, so Councillor Mahrouf, Councillor Nas, Councillor Dale, and Councillor Mohammed for leading this. Thank you very much, and the Secretariat who supported us. And please, please, please listen to what the Race Equality Commission says and make sure that we do what the recommendations do. Thank you. <laughs>
the new committee system. Yes, the policy committees have to work, but at the heart of it has to be more power and more money to the lack so that local councillors can take, can take decisions on, on behalf of local people. We need to engage and empower people, and that's why we're moving this amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sanger. The Leader of the Council. Th 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 thanks, Lord Mayor. And the turkey voting for Christmas comes to mind on, on this one. First of all, I, I just want to say um, thank you to Julie as, as Deputy Leader for, for this committee, uh, the Governance Committee of the Way, and also thank you for everyone that's took part in the transition committees, the way that they have now kind of helped uh, steer all of this go forward. And also, um, while we're on thank yous, I'd, I'd like personally to say thank you to all those councillors standing down at this election. We all come into it with all the best intentions. And I think moving forward, as we move forward, uh, Councillor Rivers said it more eloquent than what I, I could, but uh, a big thank you for all those that are standing down. Lord, Lord, Lord Mayor, <laughs> we have totally embraced this move to the committee system, right from May and beyond. Because before that, we had the big city conversation that went out around this city talking to residents exactly on how they want to uh, be engaged and empowered uh, and enabled to, to be a voice for their communities. And Lord Mayor, what we cannot do is duplicate the system. Now, my understanding was that with the light chairs had got a process already signed up and agreed cross-party with those chairs that they would want, uh, if they need any way to revisit, look at, from those meetings, of powers to be enabled down, to be done so in a structured way, and not just, as Councillor Belvin says, every time we come here, an amendment. We totally embraced this as part of the co-op executive in our agreement. The six points was to get the lights up and running, and that is what we've done. So, Lord Mayor, what I would like to honestly say about this is that this amendment with the lights sends it all out of kilter. It sends it all of what every work we've tried to do at this moment in time. So for, for me, Lord Mayor, we have a process for the, for the local area committees to feed in. We have a process for the governance committees. We're not going to get it right first time. It will be totally different at the end of the decade how we start this. So for me, Lord Mayor, the last piece is the last sentence of the paper in front of you. It talks about that there will need to be costs overall for the LAC and committee systems and be reviewed as part of the 23-24 budget process. Quite clear, black and white, there is a cost to this and we have to factor it in. What we can't do is go outside and overspend in that budget and that's why our amendment had to come today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Fox. Councillor Gilligan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So I'm just speaking today. I've been a councillor for almost a year now. So I didn't really have any knowledge at all about how a cabinet system works or how a committee system works. So I apologise to people on the committee if I was asking stupid questions. But I, I think it was a really important role for me to, to understand how the transition will work because I was on the governance committee. And I think we modelled the process very well. Um, and I was very impressed by the way we all worked together collegially to produce this new constitution for Sheffield. I do want to acknowledge, as many people have, that councillors are only one link in the chain. And it's our city and their dedicated campaigning effectively forced Sheffield Council to this point. So I want to acknowledge the collective action of the citizens and communities of Sheffield in this process. And to thank It's Our City and the others for all their hard work. We have tried to involve as many people as possible in the process so far and I want to thank people like Nigel who is here today as well who have been with us and given us their expertise and helped us shape this system. The aim is to improve democracy in the city and change the structure from an over-centralised top-down approach to a more inclusive cooperative approach where the voices of all 84 elected councillors will be contributing to decision making. I'm confident this will result in better decisions for Sheffield. And of course, we don't only want to listen to the voices of the councillors. We have to create a more accountable, inclusive local council that listens and responds to its residents. Um, we need to be open and transparent. 
and we will keep working on that process as we move forward. We need to be a responsive listening council and that's what I'm looking forward to working on in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, very similar. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I would like to say is how proud I am to have been able to work on the Governance Committee uh, to get to this point. I think we all, we've all heard today how, how well the committee worked, quite positive, uh, and I sincerely hope that this is a spirit of cooperation that will continue into the policy committees. Uh, to the benefit of everyone who lives in Sheffield, I'd like to pick out several points which I feel are important. So it's already been said that every member who sits on a policy committee will be taking decisions that are important for the city and the people of Sheffield. It's vital, therefore, that we recognise and take into serious account the twin emergencies of climate and nature. These crises will form, at the very least, a backdrop to all our futures and therefore require much more than a tick box exercise. But it won't be down to just officers and members to ensure they get the attention they demand. Built into the committee system is a drop down menu, a toolkit of the ways the people of Sheffield can engage with us. And important though these emergencies are, I'm hoping that residents and citizens of Sheffield will engage with us on a very wide range of issues issues which affect their daily lives. I'm mindful of the fact that some citizens are more confident than others in approaching the council. Mr. Slack is one who is very confident. Um, but others aren't very confident, and I, for one, will push whichever committee I sit on to reach out to those who are less confident or for those who've never even thought about engaging. Hearing their voices is really important. So, Lord Mayor, this change to our constitution is all about democracy. Without the people, our democracy is all the poorer. So I commend this change, not merely to the members gathered here today, but to every citizen of Sheffield. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Garford. Uh, Councillor Teal. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm here today because, like many residents, I didn't want healthy trees to be felled. When hundreds of us realised the Council would not hear our concerns, would not answer legitimate questions, did not seem to care how we felt, a fundamental change took place. Many people who had never given a thought to local democracy suddenly realised we didn't have a say over our own streets. We had a governance system that enabled the council, a multinational company, and the police to join forces in an attempt to crush, sometimes literally using brute force, to silence the people of this city. The exceptionally hard work of It's Our City came out of what we were learning during the trees dispute, that the council did not want to respond to residents voluntarily. The council used legal and brute force to try to achieve its aims and therefore residents needed to use the law to achieve their aims. It's Our City spoke to people across the whole of Sheffield and signed a petition which triggered a referendum to introduce a modern committee system. We are meeting today because the people have spoken. The people said that elected representatives did not speak for them when they were asked to. The majority of elected representatives in Sheffield are answerable to political parties first and the residents they are supposed to represent second. The people of Sheffield have asked politicians to listen to them. The people of Sheffield have said they want political parties to work together and they want members to work with unelected representatives of Sheffield. 
people who can offer expertise and knowledge about their local area and specialist interests. The people of Sheffield are an extraordinary <coughs> resource to this council. They want to contribute to and help build a resilient, compassionate and sustainable city. It's our city, they said, and they have shown this council twice, first by stopping the felling of healthy trees and second by winning the referendum. And they've done this, to, uh, they have shown that they can bring about change. I hope the new committee system will embrace and harness the energy of our amazing residents to build the best Sheffield for everyone. And as this is my last speech, I'd like to thank the residents of Netheredge and Sharrow uh, for the, putting their trust in me for the past uh, six years. I've had the privilege and honour to represent them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Teal. I now call upon Councillor Holmshaw. Are you not logged in? It's logged in now. Okay. Thank you for the reminder, Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, uh, I think this is a great day for Sheffield democracy and governance. The It's Our City campaign, of which I was proud to be an active supporter, has resulted in new and modern-looking committees for the 21st century. The people of Sheffield have seen that the council's democratic structures were lacking, they were over-centralised, they were top-down, they were ill-considered, and as a result, they were wrong for the people of Sheffield. They dragged the then council kicking and screaming to long overdue change. But, and you probably knew there was going to be a but, what about the terms of reference for other committees? That's the question I'm asking. So the planning committee, licensing, governments, senior officer, the appeals committee, that's where change also needs to happen. It's not all in the hands of government. This is our constitution, and it is up to us to be able to change that constitution and to change the terms of reference for those committees to make them work better. So, what we are voting for today. In the, um, in the documents we have here, uh, Appendix 5, it says when devising policy, evaluating service delivery, and taking decisions, the committee must consider public engagement, equality, diversity and inclusion, and climate and biodiversity. And those are principles that I think should be spread throughout the other committees. I think the work in the future for us to do as a council, and maybe with the help of the citizens of Sheffield, is to make that kind of change. Uh, I would like to ask the, uh, the political lead, but also the uh, legal and governments officer whether they have any points to make on that. Uh, and in Not a question and answer, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, well, I've, I can, I'd like to ask the question. I wanted to ask where, how this is going to be monitored, how are standards going to be applied, and who is responsible? Can they be approached if they're not going to be applied? Are they all just words to make us feel better? I certainly hope not. Thank you. So. Councillor Turpin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, first, just say thanks to Alison and Kaltoon, my colleagues who've uh, given me some amazing guidance and mentoring over the years, and thanks for everything and respect. Um, while I'm in the thank you mood, thanks to those on the Governance Committee, thanks to Alex Polak, great job. And also, thanks to It's Our City and the many, many community activists who got that petition filled in. And thanks to the public for supporting the referendum and making sure it won. Uh, it's an amazing example of people power. Uh, the public demanded more of councillors. They wanted more. They demanded more. Well, they're going to get more. Uh, councils can work well in either model, strong leader or committee, but 
in Sheffield, the previous leadership failed. It did not work well, and that is what called the people to uh, call for change. And we'll need to take responsibility in the future to work together properly. There'll be no hiding place for councillors who don't want to contribute. And uh, so I guess I'll just leave this with a figurative toast to a brighter with politicians behaving like grown-ups for the betterment of Sheffield. Thank you. Lord Mayor, can I move to the vote? Councillor Brocott, you don't want your right of reply, you're just happy to move to the vote. Okay. So I'm not sorry. All those in agreement of moving to the vote. Thank you, colleagues. Sorry, my speaker, I have. I'm now going to move to the vote on amendment number one, moved by Councillor MacDonald. All those in favour? Any against? Any, amend any amendments? <laughs> any abstentions? No. Okay, that's clearly carried. I now move to the vote on amendment number two, given by Councillor Sue Alston. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you. That's lost. We're now going to move to the vote on the substantive motion. All those in favour? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? That's clearly carried. Okay, well... First and last meeting for me in this chamber. Thank you all for behaving yourselves. I'd like to say one is um, it's great to be back here it's easier to chair a meeting from this position I won't say this seat because it's very uncomfortable but from this position I can see everyone's face and it really does make a difference when you're chairing a meeting not just to see the shadow of a person but actually see a person so thank you all for behaving throughout the year. I've enjoyed chairing the council meetings. It's been a real privilege. There are some of us, though, that are not going to... Not some of us, that doesn't include me, but I don't know, because I'm up for election. I want to speak about some of the people that are retiring. So, Councillor Chris Roslyn Joseph, so I've known you for a very, 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 very long time. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure that you, your colleagues, and the rest of us wish you a great retirement. And thank you for all the work that you've done in Mosborough and Bayton. <laughs> Councillor MacDonald, uh, I'm sorry to say that you'll be leaving the council. You've done a great job. I remember when you used to chair health and uh, well-being, and that was... You're a very good chair and uh, a person to be reckoned with, I'm sure. So I'm sorry to hear that you're leaving, but I also hope that you have a great retirement. <laughs> there are other people that won't be coming back next year, but they're not in the chamber. So Councillor Scott, Councillor O'Rourke, Councillor Francine Johnson, I don't think she's here, is she? I've been looking. 
and Councillor Gibson. We wish them all the best uh, in whatever they continue to do in their lives and uh, hopefully they'll have a good retirement from the council. A special thank you to Councillor Rivers. It's been a pleasure to work with you and uh, whatever you do next, you'll be amazing. And perhaps one day you'll come back. So thank you, Councillor Rivers. And Councillor Teal, I'm also sorry to say that we'll be losing you after today, but long may you continue your hard work within the Green Party out there in Sheffield. Thank you very much, everyone. Before I let you speak, Councillor Josephs, I just want to say to colleagues, I'm doing a fashion show and a big night out for my charities. Now, I haven't had very good opportunities this year to raise money for my three charities, so I hope that you'll all come to the big night out, and actually, gentlemen, you wouldn't want to come to the fashion show because it's all about ladies. So if you wish to come to either of those, please give me a, a ring and I'll make sure you get tickets. What are the dates? Uh, there, are some, there are some paperwork going round. Yeah. So, Councillor Chris Roslyn Josephs, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, I'm glad to see there's no time limit. Um, <laughs> mute him, mute him. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the colleagues on, uh, on the Council that I've worked with over the years. Um, I've been fortunate to uh, serve on many committees uh, as a backbencher, as a chair, <coughs> um, as a deputy chair, I've, I've even been a cabinet assistant, and I've, I've enjoyed 99% of, of what I've done. The, the swearing and the abuse by some members of the public you don't enjoy, but above that. Can I also say that the members of the admissions committee, which is probably the, one of the sweetest little committees anybody can be on, because you actually feel as though you're doing something for young people. And I'd like to thank the members who have been on that over the years because it's, it's always been a joy. And we've always discussed <coughs> and never fallen out and never disagreed. It's been absolutely wonderful. I think the biggest privilege I've ever had on behalf of the council was being president of the National Association of British Market Authorities. Um, I know some people think that these things are a, a, a jolly or a conference that you can go and have just a nice time at. They are important to this city. It raises the profile. Um, I was fortunate to take Sheffield round Europe on it. Um, a number of years ago, I was in uh, Budapest, and I'd got uh, people from the Ukrainian wholesale markets on one side of me and the Russian wholesale markets on the other side of me. And I tried to broker a deal between them to work together. Unfortunately, their government... Well, the Russian government was the one that stopped it. But it's nice to know that there are people out there that want to work together. And it was a privilege being in that position. So thank you to the council for putting me on it. Thank you to the people of the South East of Sheffield who voted for me. It's been an absolute privilege and a delight. My health has said to me, Chris, you've had enough. You need to retire. You can't do it any longer. And that's the reason I'm standing down. But good luck to whoever takes the the position in Mosborough. I know who I hope it will be. Um, but... Baton. Baton. Baton, sorry, Baton. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Yeah. yeah. But, but Mosborough as well, you know. I, Well, I live in Mosborough, you see. Um, sorry, Lord Mayor. Uh, I wish I luck, you may. Um, but I also wish somebody else luck. And I wish all the councillors luck in the future. One thing I said before, you do listen to the vocal minority, but for God's sake, listen to the silent majority, because the vast number of people out there don't talk to you. And sometimes the vocal minority are not always right, and the majority lose out over that. So please, listen to as many people, not just those that contact you, go and knock on the doors, contact them. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So, colleagues, this concludes the business for today. Thank you all for attending. Stay safe. Please, can, you remember, can I remind you 
you need to maintain social distancing while leaving the building. Thank you, colleagues. Have a safe journey home.